The following illustration provides a practical guide for you to have the basic understanding of solar installation and operation for your property. The inverter we install operates with two built-in charge controllers with a maximum of 450 volts open circuit voltage. Each solar panel has approximately 50 volts open circuit voltage, allowing a minimum of four and a maximum of nine solar panels to be linked in series to each charge controller. This allows for a maximum of 18 solar panels to be linked to one inverter. It's important to note that each of the solar panels linked to a charge controller must be facing in the same direction. If you can only fit eight solar panels on your roof and the split consists of four solar panels facing east and the other four solar panels facing west, each direction would link to a charge controller maximizing energy production. The reason for this is as follows. If you have four solar panels east in the shade and four solar panels west in the sun linked to only one charge controller, it would create a weak link and not produce the optimal power you might require. If each solar panel produces 400 watts and you have 10 solar panels, five linked to one charge controller and the other five linked to another charge controller, the maximum output would be 4,000 watts. In a perfect sun hour, the solar panels will produce 2,000 watts on the side facing the sun and a further 2,000 watts on the other side when facing the sun. Your power flow within your house is dependent on your demand, what you are using, what energy you require. If your solar panels are producing 4,000 watts and your house only uses 2,000 watts, 2,000 watts will first go to your house. If your battery has sufficient storage, the excess 2,000 watts will go to the charging of your battery bank. If your battery is full and you continue to use 2,000 watts, your solar panels will only produce 2,000 watts, even though it can produce 4,000 watts. Why is this? Power needs somewhere to go. For example, if you have 1,000 solar panels on your roof but only use one light bulb, your solar panels will only produce enough energy to run that one light bulb. It's therefore extremely important to have the correct size battery bank to prevent wasted storage. With the correct size battery bank, you can run your home when the sun goes down. When we begin an installation, we ascertain the important circuits within your circuit board, what you need to operate when the electricity supply is interrupted. The essential circuits, light bulbs, plugs for Wi-Fi, TV, fridge, etc. We put that into a sub DB. We call it the essential board. When there is load shedding, only that essential board will work. The non-essentials, the geezer, the oven, the stove, the high consumption users will stay in the DB and that won't run when there is load shedding. When there is no load shedding, your battery bank will run your complete house, both essentials and non-essentials, until your battery bank reaches, for example, 50%. When it reaches 50%, it will switch over to your electricity supplier to run your entire house. The reason we do this, we want you to have a reserve for when you experience load shedding for those two and a half hours. If your battery bank is at 25% and it's load shedding, once your grid comes on, your main electricity supplier will charge the battery bank until it reaches 50% again, giving you the reserve in the event of load shedding at night. If there is no further load shedding when the sun rises in the morning and your solar panels begin to produce power, if your load usage is 2000 watts and the solar panels are only making 1000 watts, the extra will come from your electricity supplier until the solar can run the house completely. If there is more solar generated, it will charge up the batteries up to 100%, weather dependent. If during the day your batteries are more than 50% and your house is using 3000 watts and your solar is producing 2000 watts, the other 1000 watts will come from your battery.